A few years ago, I built this go-kart that is made out of 3D printed blocks. The blocks are joined using these screws in here, and honestly, it's quite fun to ride. But I made this go-kart to raise Matt Denton. And Matt lives in the UK and I live in Spain. This thing isn't exactly light, but at least has brakes. To be precise, it weighs 63 kilos. And that's a lot. So I started to think I, I need something lighter. And then, then I had an idea. So I made this. And it is definitely lighter, 20 kilos. Which means that if I get all these screws, all the hardware, all the bearings on my carry-on, and then pack this on a suitcase, and I don't change clothes during the whole trip, I can actually bring this on a plane. And as Prusa had already invited me to make her fur prac, that's what I did. The, the, the bringing the thing on the plane, not the not changing clothes. And when I got there, I borrowed David's shop yeah. to get it back together, and then I suggested testing it right there, at the office. He's of moving. course I went first, just to give Send them it. a false sense of security. Just stop before you hit the glass, okay? Although I, I'm not sure if I succeeded. Oh! <laughs> oh and then nice. Ruda tried it. Ooh. <laughs> then Mickey. Okay, this is very strange. <laughs> yes. About full sand. Oh. Yeah, it's... Oh. Ah. Wham! Into the wall. Yeah. Whoa. And then David, aka Prusa guy, who I'm sure set the indoor speed record. Oh. And finally, put the fearless. Ah. First crash. Shouldn't try to. Shouldn't First try crash. To that was like a bonk. That wasn't a crash. The treacherous turn right here. Honestly, he went all in. He gave it everything. <laughs> I was almost driving on the wall. Yeah, I went with right. If anyone at the office is wondering what made that mark on the wall, it, it was Pooch. And as Pooch won the test pilot contest and I wanted to get some miles on this thing, he drove it all the way to the fairgrounds. And we learned one feature that this go-kart shares with the Ford GT40. On the way there, we found Carlos 3D, who gave it a go. And during the weekend, I found more victims, more volunteers that helped me put this thing through its paces. Like in Texas, that was really committed to find the top speed of this thing. Thompson Lader, that was the only person to go fast without tipping it over. Yeah! <laughs> God, that thing is fast. And Musa himself, who took a good lap around the show. And as we had to move the car around a lot, we got help from Boita, our light pilot, that was also very easy to push around when the car ran out of batteries. And while I was taking a look at all the amazing stuff at Prusa's factory, they offered me help bringing the car to open source, which seemed like a great idea, but I'm not one that takes the easy route. This thing is super cool, it's fun, but it's not very stable, the steering is a bit tricky. So I took the offer, but I was going to build a better one. So I made a bunch of changes to the design using Onshape, like lowering the seating position or making the rear wheel wider. And I even added an extra battery just in case it wasn't dangerous enough. I will leave a link in the description so you can try it for yourselves. And now it's time to start printing and some of those prints require my giant 3D printer. And as I've been doing a lot of printing with it, and I've learned a lot since I made it, I think it's time for a bit of maintenance and improvement. To make it easier to work on it, I will park the bed at the bottom, and that way it's easier to tilt, and then easy to work on it. And now it's just a matter of removing everything that I want to swap, which is basically the entire top half of the printer. I've already tested several improvements on the machine, I've modified printed parts, 
and like botched some stuff in it. And now that I know what works, I printed new parts and I can't wait to get them in the machine. I printed new corners and now the motor mounts are made out of polycarbonate so I can go bonkers with the current on the motors where I'm now using smaller pulleys for increased acceleration. Also I took the opportunity to make the wiring nicer and ready the entire gantry and now I can have a bracket that is attached to the belt so I can detach the carriage which is where I've made the most tests and improvements this has so many patches and botches everywhere <laughs> I added the improper extruder to it and this thing is gonna fly and one of the things that I tried is to add a narrower belt for the motor reduction so it is more compact for which I'm gonna need a narrower pulley and this pulling here has given me a lot of trouble in the past that's why I'm using a metal one but I couldn't find a 9mm metal pulley for this motor so it's time for today's video sponsor PCBWay because I designed a new pulley and just uploaded the file to pcway.com as always checked in the online viewer to see if everything was correct selected aluminium as my material of choice selected the amount and placed the order and as always the package arrived in no time and the quality of these parts is amazing and pcbway not only does 3d printing they also do cnc machining sheet metal fabrication injection molding and a lot more so as you can see the process is super easy and the quality is top notch so give PCBWay a try following the link in the description and now let's put the extruder together I didn't change much on the design but I made a lot of small changes to make my life easier adjusted some tolerances here and there made a new DIY silicone sock for the hot end but it was basically putting it back together Now the belts in the country are attached to this block and that way I can remove the carriage without having to touch the belts. And just like that, the printer is ready to go back upright. But we still need to swap the corners on the other side that have now improved belt tensioners. And while I was at it, I changed the homing sequence and now I can do sensorless homing on all three axes. I think we are ready to start assembling. The first thing that I'm going to do is to add this heat set insert so we can screw everything together. Although th these aren't heat set inserts, but, but they are. Because it seems that if you heat it up, anything can be a heat set insert. And as you can see, this assembly requires quite a few of them. And I will continue by attaching the front pedals, which are not what they seem. Because in an effort to save weight, I removed the steering column and the steering wheel, and now you steer the go-kart uh, with your feet. So now each pedal pulls from a set of cables that pulls from the wheels to make them steer. What do you mean it doesn't make sense? Of course it makes sense! So of course we need two pedals to steer right and left and as the cables are only pulling we need to attach some springs to pull back on the pedals. I printed the front axles in process as a filament so I'm pretty sure those will hold. This notch in here limits the rotation of the wheel so it doesn't rub anywhere. There is a precise way these wires have to be installed and of course I did it wrong a few times but I think you, you get the idea. I couldn't figure out a fancier way of doing this, so I'm just using some aluminum tubes to make some brackets to adjust the length of the cables. And then I will use these 3D printed brackets to do the fine adjustment so it goes uh, straight.
I think this will be good enough for now. I will adjust it when I can just drive it to see if it goes straight. And the top cover that doubles as a support for the top bearings on the front axles. And now it's time for some wheels. And I had this issue previously where the rim was sliding on the tire. So I modified the design. I made the tolerances tighter and that may have caused another issue. Let's see if you can spot it. As it will be less than ideal if a wheel came out while riding it, I added this heat set insert previously in the shaft just for this screw here. Safety. Of course, I keep printing new parts, so let's grab us a new seat. And install the brake caliper bracket and add a whole lot more heat set inserts. Time from some side plates fresh from the printer. And now I can attach the motor to the bracket that I can now attach to the car because it pivots between the seat and the side panel. Yeah, I don't think that I made my life exactly easy with this design. Time for the controls. First, the handbrake lever. Before I can install it, I need to add this plate on the sides to make it look nicer. And then I can set the screw that sets the zero position and the spring that brings it back. Now pass the brake cable through the frame all the way back to the brake caliper, which seems to work. Now get the caliper attached to the bracket in its final position and wire the speed controller and put it in the hole that I made for it in the frame. The throttle lever rotates a potentiometer that is read by a microcontroller that then sends the speed to the motor speed controller via PWM. I'm pretty sure that there is a better way of doing this, but this works. And I will run now to the front the control cable, the USB cable, and the power cable. At the front, I'm adding three battery sockets for three Makita batteries, and the microcontroller that will read the potentiometer and send the information to the speed controller. Next, the assembly of the rear wheel that shows even better how tight the tolerances are now. Pretty, pretty, pretty tight. I'll say that's good enough. Time for the pulley that connects it to the motor. and the brake disc that needs to be a little bit loose to match the brake caliper position without braking. And the rear wheel is ready to go in the car. I'm using an aluminum axle, but honestly, at this point, it would have been way easier to use a 3D printed one. The belt tensioning mechanism pulls the motor bracket up using a screw that is attached to the seat. And it works pretty well. And I think with that is finished, so let's put in the finishing touches and test it. A couple of side panels to make it look nicer. As the middle of the car, right where the bottom of the seat is, looks really thin and weak, I made a couple of reinforcements to make it stronger. Grip it on the other side. A nice cover for the battery compartment. A final adjustment of the steering a cover for the motor just in case, a racing plate, and it's done. <laughs> well, it seems to work.
But this is not the one that went to San Francisco. This is the one that I made to make a dramatic reenactment of the process of making one, because in the most pure open source style, I made the two go-karts that I brought there in Extremis last minute project. So I recorded nothing. I made the two go-karts, put them in two boxes, plus I sent them all the way to San Francisco. And once I got there, let's say that I, I got help testing it. Break, 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 break. Break. There's also no reverse. <laughs> I love this. I love this. I want one. Let's see if you can spot the two very distinct riding styles. I was running behind him. <laughs> five out of five stars. As the next day there was going to be a lot of people around, we decided to limit the top speed. But that didn't seem to remove the fun from it. But what made this project worth it is that everyone had a great time with it. And that's it for this video. Thanks a lot to all my Patreons and members. Thank you. Thanks a lot to Pooch. Without you, this video wouldn't have been possible. Thanks, my friend. Thanks to all the people at Prusa for enabling this madness. <laughs> Thank you. And thanks a lot to all the people at Open Source. That event is amazing and you should all go. And now please go and make something! And I, I had to break.